One of the best things I'd say brings in extra replay value with the Resident Evil games are the character costumes. It doesn't change the story or gameplay experience, unless they include a specific weapon like they did with Claire in the original Resident Evil 2 by giving her a quickshot revolver, or how Leon would suddenly aim his weapon revealing his inner thug. But it's still some of the best additions to look forward to when it comes to completing a game, as it just gives you another reason to play the game once again but this time with a whole new style in mind. But did you know that there were countless costumes that were pitched, created, and even removed before the games would release? Well, today we'll be taking a look at some of them in this segment called Cancelled Costumes Part 1. Let's begin. Billy's Cowboy Costume in Resident Evil Zero this one would have definitely been a welcoming costume, not only because Billy looks like the kind of character that can pull it off, but Rebecca already has an alternate costume that's like a cowgirl outfit. So the two of them would have had the best team-up costumes here, and players would most likely want to have them wearing the cowboy outfits most of the time. I know I would. There are two concept art designs for Billy's cowboy costume, but I'd say the colored one is the better of the two. But it just surprises me how these just ended up in the concept art stages when Rebecca ended up getting over 13 costumes to choose from, whereas Billy would only get 3. Rebecca's Tatsunoku Costume Tatsunoku is a Japanese animation company which has produced countless cartoons starting in the 60s. I've never played a Tatsunoku based game before and frankly my only introduction to it was when I saw a costumed set of characters on a cup a long ass time ago in Mexico. I always thought that they were Power Rangers, and I'm sure most of you were introduced to Tatsunoku characters with the Wii game called Tatsunoku vs Capcom, a game that I still haven't played. But because of how little we know about it, I think this would have been a good opportunity to give Rebecca that Tatsunoku costume and remind regional fans of the franchise they likely know nothing about. The costume is more resembling of the anime called Science Ninja Team Gacha Man. I'm sorry, uh, that's that's a horrible name for a team. Might as well go with the Dork Squad or Team Virgin. Team Vegan, maybe? I guess that's probably why they shortened it to Gotcha Man. But with the right art style, these costumes can look pretty badass. And Rebecca's design looks even better because she has a gun holster vest and a knife leg strap to go with it. Resident Evil 1, Chris's alternate color outfit. This concept art design includes small differences all around besides the alternate color being blue. Here he's wearing a bulletproof vest, he's wearing a red leg strap, his gloves are different, but most of all, his hair is blonde and slick back. It's almost like he was originally going to be the, well, have the appearance of Albert Wesker, or Leon Kennedy since he too has a similar outfit to this one. I always wonder what the Red Scorpion is all about though. It's never been noted before, and if anything, it could just be one of the puzzle crests. But besides this costume, there are more alternate costume sketches that have gone unnoticed. Some of these appear to be combinations of other outfits, different shoulder pads as well, vests, hairstyles, my favorite one being this outfit, which includes what appears to be a scouter straight out of Dragon Ball Z. Even though Chris would never receive this item in his alternate costumes, Billy Cohen actually got one for his Mercs costume, which is my reason to why I always like giving Billy that particular costume even though it's really weird looking. Who wouldn't want to see a Resident Evil character sporting a DBZ scouter just for the hell of it? Jill's Beetlejuice outfit. This is an outfit I wouldn't expect to see as a costume pitch for Jill, but since she is a very fashionable woman, I can see this as something she'd actually wear on a day off. It could also be like a referee outfit since that necklace could also be a whistle. And again, since Jill is a very fashionable character, then you know she'd be wearing those striped pants to go with that outfit. There's another one that's slightly similar to this one, and that too comes with a necklace. It looks like the same necklace, and seeing it closer, I get the feeling that it's not a whistle. Whatever her style is with this one, I think we can all agree that it's a missed opportunity to not include either costumes for her to wear in the original RE1, or any games for that matter. Resident Evil 1 Remake, Chris's Negan Outfit 
Now, I'm pretty sure this isn't a reference to Negan's outfit from the Walking Dead franchise, mainly because this game came out way before those comics were made. The first Walking Dead issue was published in 2003, and the RE1 remake was released in 2002. But even though it's not a reference to Negan, there's no other iconic character out there that we all automatically think of when wearing this. So, it would have been the perfect costume to include for Chris in the RE1 remake, especially since Negan is a zombie killer himself. But, if this outfit were to be an option, I think it'd be best if they removed those sunglasses, as that kind of makes him look like Wesker, and I don't think any other character can really pull off the sunglasses at night. Besides Wesker, right? Jill's teacher outfit. It's crazy to believe that Jill's teacher outfit would never become an official alternate costume for any of the classic RE games. I like the ones that were included with the RE1 remake, but with the vast amount of costumes we see in the archives, it leaves me baffled to see that we only got four costumes to choose from in total for Jill. One of those being the default outfit, one being the RE3 outfit, and another being her RE5 outfit. I can accept her RE3 outfit as an extra costume mainly because we never got a proper remake for RE3 like Capcom initially planned on doing back when they released the RE1 remake. But her RE5 outfit should have definitely been swapped for any of the concept art designs that they have here. And if they had to go with one, Jill's teacher outfit would most definitely be my choice. Jill's leather spy suit. Here's another interesting choice. This leather suit looks very similar to another of her RE5 outfits, this time the one she wore when she was being controlled by Wesker. But here, she'd also be wearing this headpiece that makes her look like she's a part of Hunk's squad, at least the one from Operation Raccoon City. I'd say it also gives her that splinter cell appearance, which is quite formidable for sneaking around enemies and facing off against zombies in a dark environment. Leon's Orange Bulletproof Vest this is a costume that you've probably seen around with the advertisements of Resident Evil 2, or the prototype known as 1.5. And if you've played Resident Evil Gaiden, then you've likely seen the image of Leon wearing this exact outfit, but only with the cover art of the game case. So Leon was meant to wear this orange bulletproof vest on RE2, but they removed it for the final version. And then in Resident Evil Gaiden, he was meant to finally wear it, but again, they didn't include it for some reason. Both games had every reason to include that orange vest because even though Ari Gaiden just used the same character sprite for Leon and Barry, they could have just changed the color of his vest orange. It would have even matched with his hair, so in a way, it wouldn't stand out. The White Body Armor This armor was actually going to make a difference in the game. Leon would end up taking less damage while wearing it. And they were even including battle damage, so it's possible that after reaching the danger condition, his armor might completely disappear. And I think that would have been interesting to see. Perhaps he would not start off with that body armor, you would find it somewhere in the RPD, and you'd get to choose when you'd like to wear it. Because you'd only get to wear it once, as it would disappear after taking too much damage. Imagine that. There was also a casual outfit for Leon, and that too surprises me to see that they created a model for it, and in the end, the developers decided to remove it for the final version. We did receive a couple different alternate costumes for Leon, but if they already created the model for this costume, why remove it in the end? Why not include it as another alternate costume you'd find in the lockers? Resident Evil 4, Leon's alternate costume. This is something that was shown in the Resident Evil archives, but it doesn't include any concept art for it. You don't usually find fully rendered costumes unless they're making an appearance in the game. But like with Leon's orange vest and white body armor in RE1.5, this one would not be unlocked in the final version. But I think the reason why we don't see this outfit along with the rest of his alternate costumes is because this was likely going to be his main outfit throughout the game, which would explain why they created a 3D model of it. But it looks a little too similar to his main RPD outfit from RE2, and I'm sure the devs wanted to give Leon a whole new appearance to flesh out some of his personality, since costumes can really tell a lot about a person. Resident Evil 6, Chris American Hero Costume It seems that the developers of Resident Evil 6 got to have some fun with creating alternate costumes for the playable characters in the game, as there are countless costume pitches that were created for each character alone. But I say some fun because in the end, they only chose one alternate costume for each character. It feels like an even bigger waste when each character has up to three alternate costumes, but two of them are the same one with a different color variation and the third is just a low-quality polygonal character model. 
I think Chris's samurai costume is a great choice. In a way, it's almost symbolic as we've seen Chris receive a ninja costume back in Resident Evil DS, and now they gave him a samurai costume. But if they were willing to go with such a creative costume, this American hero costume would have been a delightful choice to include, especially for the boulder puncher himself. I mean, Resident Evil 6 is full of non-stop action, why the hell not give Chris the outfit that would make him right at home with such a delirious Michael Bay-like experience? I know I would easily pick this costume for Chris just to accept the scenario and have a little more fun with it. Ada's lingerie outfit. And speaking of fun, Ada Wong is a femme fatale that loves looking good while she's on the job. So this would likely be an exaggerated way of looking good while doing what she does best. And that's to tease the hell out of Leon. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if players would always put Ada in this outfit all the time. Heck, I wouldn't be surprised if it only took two days for modders to include their own version of this outfit themselves as soon as these costume concepts were revealed. Here's another one of my favorites for Leon. A costume that includes him carrying the merchant on his back. When the artists came up with all these costumes, they all put them to a vote as to which costumes would make it into the game. Why did they pass on this hilarious looking costume? Once again, that's the beauty of alternate costumes. They can be as random and hilarious as possible. This should have been included. I don't care if it mostly covers Leon's body from the back, this costume would have never been forgotten by the players. Especially if every time you switch weapons or reload, the merchant passes you your weapon and reloads them for you. The mechanic costume for Helena. There's something about a female mechanic that makes those guys interested in getting to know them just a little more than usual. And Elena isn't exactly a character I know much about, but if they threw in this costume, I'd like to know a little more about this character. It'd be even cooler if she had a melee weapon that was a big ass wrench. Again, creators should have really let loose and thrown in extra costumes over the same alternate costumes with a different color variation, especially with the polygonal costumes. Who the hell even chooses those? And this is yet another great example of why the developers should have seriously let loose on all these alternate costumes. A freaking mariachi costume for peers? I have never seen a mariachi costume for a playable character in any games whatsoever. Let me know in the comments if there even is one. And like with Elena, this is another character I didn't really bother knowing enough about. So giving him this costume would have been my personal reason to choose this character over any other male character any day. <laughs> Especially if he's got a guitar for a melee weapon. Sherry Gangster Girl costume. This one is pretty badass. Kind of reminds me of that Michael Jackson music video of Rock My World. I don't think any woman wore this kind of outfit in that music video, but I just get that thought in mind. Plus, you don't really see gangster girls looking like this in movies or games. But this would have been the perfect game to include it in. A non-stop action game with hundreds of explosions? Yeah, you need a gangster girl like Sherry Burke to be causing some of that chaos for sure. Looking like this. Missed opportunities, Capcom. Missed opportunities. That's it for the video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to give this video a chance to grow. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters for their impeccable generosity. Your support means a lot to me and you are part of the reason why I try to make the best content that I can. And if you like this content, check out the rest of my channel. You'll find more entertainment from separate franchises I like to cover such as Mortal Kombat, Dragon Ball Z, Celebrity Deathmatch, Men in Black, The Mask, Batman Comics, The Terminator, TMNT, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil, and more. If you're a Patreon supporter, check out my exclusive videos such as the Gantz content. And if you'd like to show your support, go to my Patreon and support the channel, which is only a dollar. Sacrifice that McChicken for extra quality content, my friend. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video, and remember to have an awesome day.